Let's learn how to generate electricity from a potato. Take a potato. Now take a knife and make a small hole inside the potato enough to fit a bulb. Take two magnets and place on each side of potato. Take a copper wire. Now insert the copper wire into these magnets and insert ends into potato. Repeat it. Now place the bulb in the hole. Wow! Seed potato can be used to generate electricity. More or less, potato juice contains many water-soluble chemicals that may cause a chemical reaction with one or both of our copper wire. So we get some electricity from that. Let's learn how the candles are blown off in presence of CO2. Take an empty glass. Now put three lighted candles in a row. Take another empty glass. Put some soda in the empty glass. Now pour some vinegar into it. Now take this glass with soda and vinegar near an empty glass so carbon dioxide passes to it. Now take the glass with carbon dioxide and move over candles. Wow! The carbon dioxide from the glass blow the candles. More or less, when you mix baking soda and vinegar, you produce carbon dioxide. Now flame needs oxygen to sustain and carbon dioxide acts as fire extinguisher. Let's make your own water pump with balloon and a bottle. Take an empty bottle. Now make a small hole with drill machine halfway up on one side of the bottle. Put a straw through the hole. Now seal the hole with a glue. Take an empty glass and place below the straw. Now remove the bottle cap. Now fill up the bottle with some water. Now blow up a balloon and hold it. Wow! The air in the balloon pushes the water out, creating your own water pump. More or less, pressure is created when air is trapped inside balloon.
by releasing the air from the balloon into the bottle, water is forced out through the straw, creating a water pump. Let's make beautiful colored raindrops within the house. Take a small bowl. Now fill the bowl with oil. Now add few drops of different food coloring into the oil. Repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it. Now stir the mixture well. Place this bowl to one side. Now take a jar filled with water. Pour the mixture of oil and food colors into the jar. Wait and see the magic begins with each drops falling down. Wow! It's raining in color. More or less, oil and water do not mix no matter how much they are stirred. And oil being heavier than water, they settle down at the bottom drop by drop. Let's make a jet-powered boat using a bottle. Take an empty bottle. Now take out the bottle cap. Make a small hole in a bottle cap with drill machine. usual straw. Cut some portion from the drop with a scissor. Now pierce the straw into the bottle cap through a hole. Now seal the hole with blue tack to prevent the air escape through the hole. Now take a bowl filled with vinegar. Pour some food color into the vinegar. Stir the vinegar well till it becomes colored. Place a funnel over the bottle. Pour the colored vinegar into the bottle over the funnel. Now place this bottle aside. Take a small tub filled with water. Now put a spoon.
spoonful of baking soda into the vinegar bottle. Now close the bottle cap immediately. Put the bottle into the water tub and see the magic. Wow! The bottle has become a jet-powered boat. More or less, on mixing baking soda and vinegar it releases carbon dioxide. The locked up carbon dioxide has a much larger volume than the vinegar and baking soda so it bubbles up and it pushes outwards, building up the pressure, through the straw nozzle. Let's learn how to create the vacuum using a glass and candle. Take an empty plate. Place the candle on it. Pour colored water onto the plate. Now light the candle using the lighter. Now place your glass on top of the candle. Wow! See the water started rising up inside the glass instantly. More or less, the heat from the candle starts to create a vacuum inside the glass. The liquid forms an airtight seal around the edge and the vacuum inside sucks the liquid into the glass. Let's learn how to inflate a balloon using baking soda and vinegar. Take an empty bottle. Now put the funnel on the bottle head. Now carefully pour the vinegar into the bottle. Take a balloon. Place another funnel over the mouth of balloon. Now add some amount of baking soda and remove the funnel. Then carefully fit the balloon over the bottle opening and be careful not to drop baking soda into vinegar yet. Wow! See the reaction and balloon inflating automatically. More or less, when baking soda and vinegar reacts, it releases carbon dioxide. The gas leaves the liquid mixture and expands throughout the bottle and the balloon, inflating it. Let's make an erupting volcano for the science fair. Take an empty cardboard box. Place an empty bottle in the middle of the box. Fix the bottle with glue so that it doesn't move. Now place a funnel over the bottle neck. Add baking soda into the bottle over the funnel.
now scrunch up some newspaper around the bottle with just head being open. Make a masking tape frame around the newspaper. Now place the clay around the newspaper to give a look like a volcano mountain. Take some vinegar in a flask. Add food coloring into the vinegar. Pour the vinegar into the opening of the volcanic mountain. Eruption time. See the volcano erupting lava. More or less, a chemical reaction between vinegar and baking soda creates a gas called carbon dioxide. There is not enough room in the bottle for the gas to spread out so it leaves through the opening very quickly, causing an eruption. Let's make an electromagnet using a simple battery. Take an iron nail. Take a copper wire and wrap it around the nail in a spiral pattern leaving two lengths of wire on either end. Now line up the two ends of copper wire with a battery. Now place some metal objects on the table. Move the nail near the metal objects. Now try to remove the battery connection and see what happens. You can see that now no more nail is magnetic. More or less, the electricity flowing through the copper wire has passed into the iron nail making it magnetic. Let's build a simple electromagnetic train. Take a lengthy copper wire coil. Now take an AA battery. Now place three neodymium magnets on either side of the battery so that they stick to the battery. Now insert this battery from right end of the coil. Wow! You see an electromagnetic drain that just passed through this coil. Let's do it again. You will notice that the drain will only run in one direction because of the magnetic poles. More or less. When you put the battery and magnet inside the copper coil, it causes electrical current to flow through the copper wire creating a magnetic field in the section of the coil around the battery. This magnetic field has its own north and south poles which push the drain along the track.